There are a lot of powerful agents in patch 9.1, but these are the strongest to absolutely carry every single game. Whether you're up against Smurfs or have people on your team that are throwing or just flat out terrible, you need to oftentimes go above and beyond and dominate a game, solo carrying your entire team to a victory. And these are the five agents that we would recommend, starting off with number one, Neon. Neon is absolutely taking over the meta right now, with many calling for her nerf. But until she does, it's your chance to use and abuse this character. The thing about Neon is that she fundamentally breaks the rules of Valorant, allowing you to be perfectly accurate while you're sliding multiple corners, setting up a no-win scenario for your opponent, where by the time they see you, you're already killing them, and you're able to clear multiple angles this way, allowing you to take space, win fights, get kills, and be this unstoppable force. But there's a lot of players that play Neon and don't quite pop off, so what are they doing wrong that other Neon players are doing right that causes them to take over an entire game and it really comes down to when you were investing your slide ability in what way do you use it because you're not gonna want to just run and slide through every single place there's a lot of utility that can shut you down like cypher trips there's players that just might not be there so you're wasting your utility so it's really important to understand when you should or shouldn't be running and sliding around a certain corner I would say as a general rule of thumb you can use neons run to allow you to jiggle peek a lot of corners and get confirmation of enemies location before you actually full commit and then only full commit a slide when you know without a doubt that an opponent is there or the space that you're getting is worth utilizing one of your slides what i mean by that is getting a little bit of space early before you hit a site might be better to jiggle peek and allow you and your team to swing it out together but if you're full committing to a site you want to clear the really dangerous areas with the slide and commit to it because if there's no one there at least you get control of the site but if there is someone there then you're setting up a really unfair fight fight where they have to hit you while you're sliding in first shot accurate you're gonna get better at maintaining this balance over time but try not to just blow both slides right out the gate and waste them on situations where you're not really taking a gunfight but in addition to just sliding neon's ultimate is also just crazy powerful because you're running and shooting perfectly accurate and enemies are gonna have a really hard time hitting you i would really say though that you need to disconnect using your ultimate from normal gunplay because you never want to stop change direction Directions oftentimes is bad as well. You want to constantly be moving so that it's really, really difficult to hit you. And you don't want to kind of take fights like you would with a rifle because you're slowing yourself down way too much and you're allowing enemies for really easy shots on you. Now, one of the things that could actually affect your movement and your aim on every single character is your movement. And so many players have terrible movement. You can easily just watch how someone moves and quickly deduce what rank they're in. And that's just how important movement is. But on our Move Like a God course on the Skill Cap website, Website. we teach you all of the movement fundamentals so you can go from terrible movement to god tier movement as quickly as possible and with our money back guarantee if you don't climb you don't pay so what are you waiting for slide on over to the skill cap website and check it out down below then the next agent that we got to talk about is actually clove and for solo caring specifically i think clove is the very best agent because she gets to do a lot of things that other controllers just don't get to do she gets to be far greedier with the way that she challenges and fights enemies because she gets a second life plus the ability to smoke after death meaning that as long as you're continuing that hit she's still going to be able to get value and fill the fundamental job for her team this is super important because other controllers they have to be very cautious really value their life in a much more serious way because if they die they can make it impossible for their team to execute so you can afford to be more proactive and oftentimes be the one that follows up directly with your duelist trade them aggressively and then further take site control aggressively and another thing that i think is super underrated in general is just your ability to frag when you can play around your own smokes there's going to be a lot of situations where you get a kill pop a smoke around you use the smoke to peek or isolate engagements this is one of the best things that a controller can do on the fly to allow them to literally pop off in a way that a duelist cannot because they get to basically force enemies to push around and through the smoke and that's why clove could be amazing in a clutch but also it's a character that brings a lot of static value to your team in the form of smokes and just setting up sight tanks i would the only risky thing you can do on clove is playing too far away from your objectives and lurking a bit too much i think there are times when you can lurk but you got to make sure that you can still do your essential job and if you die and get caught out you're still in position to actually smoke for your team also right now late lurking is super powerful and clove really wants to be able to smoke for her team so there are going to be specific examples when you can lurk but make sure that you're still doing your fundamental job if you're the only controller now the next character we got to talk about is actually gecko and gecko is just really strong especially 
especially if we're talking about ranks lower than diamond i cannot recommend gecko enough a lot of players are not disciplined enough to deal with the flashes it gives you information about where enemies are and you're gonna full blind people so even if they turn on them they're just gonna get killed and if you combine that with the fact that gecko gets to allow a plant plus a hold more bodies trading people out when they try to stop the plant setting up fundamental strategies that you just can't really utilize with other characters because you get to plant and set up things that protect the plant or holding for the character planting so you can play all default which is super super strong i also think the ability to reuse multiple pieces of utility if you go and retrieve them is also amazing for rotating gathering information testing a potential lurk or just playing off your intuition right sometimes you think hey maybe there's someone lurked up here but but there's also action on the other side of the map i'm not gonna waste utility i'm just gonna rotate off or you're just gonna dry peek it and then die gecko gets to do that but also potentially gets to retake his utility which is super amazing and then his ultimate is also just almost a surefire win in the right situation especially if you're playing post plant you get to put up a no win scenario for the enemy team and all in all i would just say that gecko is just a great all-around character in this meta and i would highly recommend it even after the cypher nerfs cypher is still incredibly busted in this meta even though there's a small wind up before the full hack reveals it's only half a second and when you combine that with utility like your cypher cages in one ways it is going to be impossible for players to deal with that before they get revealed and get punished by a cypher oftentimes if you do not have a character that can break trap utility you're gonna have a really hard time pushing up against a cypher even after these pretty meaningful nerfs i do think there's gonna be some extra value in setting up your trap wires in ways that are creative and don't fall into what everyone else is doing so players are caught off guard by it and by the time they realize where the things are connected to and where they need to shoot it's too late and that 0.5 seconds is meaningless that being said when you're up against compositions that want to destroy your trips you need to be a little bit creative with how you're placing them think about where enemies are going to funnel to think about how you could set up a trip to still get some amount of value or information and i think most important of all on cypher you need to really be careful about tracking enemy ultimates because once they have ultimates they're going to play way different enemies are often going to make a really proactive play on certain ultimate cues like clove ultimate phoenix ultimate even gecko ultimate there's a lot of ults that when they have them you know that they're gonna go in very hyper aggressively and even brute force through your trips and you need to know when that is how you can either change up your setup or play off site and potentially for retake hide your cam don't look in your cam save it for the retake because you know they're gonna play way different than they normally do so look at people's ultimate look who has ultimate look who's one orb away realize that they're gonna go potentially grab that and hit on your site and if you're prepared for this you can make a plan to be better suited to either sustain and survive through it for retake it down phoenix has received some rather massive buffs that might make him his strongest variation we have ever seen we got his curveball flash changed to a signature shot so you're gonna get a free one every single round and that's a really big deal by the way and then you're gonna be able to generate more after you get a kill this is incredible because you're always gonna be a threat you don't have to worry about wasting your flashes on a gamble and then you know burning that money for no reason you're always gonna be able to take an advantage fight clear out a sight line it's a really really nice change and most importantly of all being able to touch his blaze or hot hands and get a full duration of his heal that's incredible allowing him to use these abilities in both ways that are effective right he can molly out a corner and then run up clear the corner and touch his fire and get a lot of heals or he can flame wall into sight touch his blaze and actually get healed up this is a really big deal for phoenix because in general using your abilities to take a tactical advantage was far better than healing like most people wanted to heal but healing yourself up just a little bit was not worth getting an advantage fighter forcing someone out of like a corner and swinging into you or being able to cross onto point without enemies knowing these were all really really important things but now you don't have to pick between one or the other you get to do both but these are the five best agents that i would suggest you play right now let me know if there's any agent you feel like we missed and definitely check out skill capped if you really want to get god tier movement or god tier aim we have courses dedicated to help you go through the motions from beginner all the way to pro level so you can quickly master these fundamental step-by-step -step, start caring in your games and climb as quickly as possible we offer money back guarantees so if you don't climb you don't pay so check it out right now in the links down below